So to get started, uh, I'm going to introduce a concept called IP reputation. Uh, so one of the most important tools in the arsenal of email receivers is IP reputation. Email receivers maintain a reputation score for all of your IP addresses. And depending on the reputation score assessed by the email receiver, your email is either going to get delivered or sent to the junk folder or your IP will be blocked. Obviously, legitimate email senders want their mail to hit the inbox rather than, than the junk folder. And this is why it's really important to maintain a good IP reputation as a hosting provider. Now, hosting providers have a tough time maintaining a positive IP reputation because servers, users, and applications are on, under constant attack by spammers and other cyber criminals who compromise these resources so that they can deliver bad stuff like phishing attacks and spam. So when spammers install a rootkit, steal someone's password, or, or exploit a vulnerability in an application, they gain a powerful resource for sending out spam. And they also gain something very valuable, the reputation of the hosting provider's network. But the IP reputation does not last long once a spammer takes root on a server. Whether they have compromised a user account, um, or the root system, or a WordPress plugin, the effect is the same. Email receivers will quickly notice spam coming from the server, the IP reputation is reduced, and eventually the machine will get blocked. If you have lots of spammers in your network, then eventually you may have difficulty sending email from any of your servers or from entire regions of your IP address space. So here's five simple steps that you can follow to stay off of IP blacklists and achieve a good IP reputation so that your email can be delivered. The first step is to vet your customers. Spammers use all sorts of tactics to hide themselves uh, when registering for a new web hosting account. But there's a lot that you can do as a hoster to identify the dumb spammers before they can set up an account. The smart spammers is a little bit more difficult. So your first step in vetting new customers should be to read the MOG best practices for hosting providers. Uh, second, if you allow web signups to your hosting service, you should use a vetting service API like eHawk. Uh, vetting services provide an API call that uh, allows you to look up the credentials of the person signing up and see whether they've tried to sign up fraudulently somewhere else. And third, you should have a process for manually reviewing new customers. I mean, unless your sign-up volume is truly enormous, uh, giving a, a new customer a phone call or sending them an email to see what their intentions are with your service can actually be quite a, an effective way of identifying the bad guys. Now even if you do a great job of vetting new customers, spammers are still going to find ways to get into your systems. Fortunately, many email receivers and the reputation providers who support them are more than happy to give you the information you need about abuse that's happening on your servers. And they do this using something called a feedback loop. So the first and most important thing you can do to stay off blacklists is to tune into these feedback loops to see what email receivers are thinking about the mail coming from your network. So the first step is to make sure that you post honest and accurate abuse contact information in the who is records that are associated with your IP addresses. And if you have customers, make sure that they also have an accurate abuse contact information in their uh, who is data. Second, you need to register for feedback loops with the major email providers. There's about 20 feedback loops that are absolutely mandatory that you should register for. And this will give you coverage of Microsoft, AOL, Comcast, Fox, uh, and Yahoo and some others. And finally, once you've registered with the major feedback loops, you're going to need to actively process feedback from all of the feedback loops. So make sure your abuse team has a way of receiving abuse emails and a process for handling them. Whether you're just sticking them into a ticketing system or you're using a more advanced product like Abusix to manage all the feedback loop data, the, the important thing is that you're actually looking at it in a systematic way. So the third step you have to do is to enforce updates. Spammers love sending spam through compromised web applications like WordPress and Joomla. These applications have a really large attack surface and many vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, there's thousands of WordPress plugins, they have lots of bugs, it's basically impossible to stay on top of all of those bugs all the time. So if you could do it, you should encourage or force your customers to update web applications with the latest security patches. This will reduce the attack surface a great deal and it doesn't cost very much. If you can't force your users to update 
their ancient WordPress install, then the best alternative is to segregate their email traffic. So basically, if you know that one customer is using a really outdated version of WordPress, then send them through a special mail server that is like the crap mail server for sites that you know are probably going to be compromised. Number four, have a strong uh, acceptable usage policy. Uh, once you detect a spammer in your network, you're going to need some strong legal tools so that you can get them off of your network. So even if you already have an AUP, Spam House has an AUP generator that gives you a very decent policy that you can cut and paste into your own terms and may fill in the gaps um, in your terms with some things that you haven't thought of. Uh, spammers look for hosting providers that have friendly, acceptable usage param uh, policies. So by having an aggressive AUP, you're going to defer spammers from signing up with your services or targeting your services. And finally, number five, uh, spammers often control hosting infrastructure using long-lived VPN connections from a central control point. They also tend to generate unusual traffic when compared with ordinary hosting customers. So watching NetFlow is a cheap way to spot abusive behavior by spammers, basically looking for long-lived VPN connections. Spamhost provides free blacklists that you can program into your routers and DNS servers to stop spammers from communicating with their command and control infrastructure. So the drop list can feed directly into your routers using BGP, and it basically teaches your routers to never route packets into certain bad parts of the internet. So this is a really magical thing. If you put drop in, you're gonna see abusive traffic magically disappear from your network. The RPZ list is something in your DNS servers that, that basically prevents lookups of bad stuff. So it's as if those domains don't even exist, or the name servers behind them. And finally, Honestly, a really cheap way to reduce spam coming from your network is to implement rate limits for your user accounts. Uh, so we suggest limiting a shared hosting account to not more than 50 messages per hour. If a customer needs more volume than that, they can always contact you. You can then vet them to see if they're legit before allowing that to happen. Uh, so the URL on the, on the screen here has some decent rate limit parameters for XM that you can just plug in. Okay, I lied. There's actually six things that you there's five free things and there's one commercial thing. Um, so the sixth step to getting off of blacklists and ensuring email delivery is to just outsource it to someone else. Um, so rather than dealing with email delivery issues, you can use a service like MailChannel's Cloud to receive email from your servers, filter out the spam, and send legitimate email reliably. Uh, an outsourced service will deal with all of the challenges of tuning into feedback loops and identifying abusive content and behavior from your users, and ideally will also let you know where the abusive accounts are so that you can shut them down proactively. Um, here's a brief little case study about how a major hosting provider used an outsourced email delivery service to achieve better deliverability. So of the email that this hosting provider sends to the service for delivery, only about 56% of it is accepted. The rest uh, is blocked because it's coming from suspicious accounts or accounts that are, are sending spam. Once the messages have been accepted, all, there's almost a 100% chance that, that that message will get delivered to the internet. What this means is effectively that um, if there is a delivery problem, you just have to talk to the service provider who's delivering your mail, and you can sort it out with them. You don't have to sort out your delivery problems with the entire internet. So has anyone here ever had an issue trying to get a, bl a blacklisting released by an IP blacklist provider? And was that an easy experience or a painful experience? <laughs> it depends. Some of them are really easy, sometimes it's very painful. If you outsource your mail delivery to a third party, then if you have a delivery problem, you just work with them. They're the friendly people. Uh, you pay them money, right? Better than dealing with this anonymous group of email receivers and IP blacklist operators on the internet. Um, so I'll leave you with a, a case study uh, of a service provider who outsourced their mail sending to our cloud service. Um, I encourage you to take a look at that case study if you're interested. So I'm Ken Simpson from Mail Channels. Uh, we're in booth H15, uh, and we're happy to.